may not be the Banking Royal Commission that uh, undoes Turnbull or the uh, result of the Queensland state election, but it could be the uh, Benelog by-election, which is being held on Saturday, the uh, 16th of December, uh, which was uh, triggered by the fact that uh, the sitting Liberal MP, uh, Joel At Alexander uh, discovered that he was a uh, dual uh, British citizen on account of his father. Now, uh, Benelog, he's, he, he's got a uh, healthy uh, margin there of around 9% uh, or 10%, but we have to remember that uh, that was the seat that uh, it used to be John Howard's seat, which he lost in 2007 uh, to, to Maxine McHugh. So Labor, uh, they, they can win it, and they've uh, ro uh, rolled out a, another star candidate. I don't know what it is about Benelog and uh, the ALP uh, rolling out star candidates candidates because they've got a uh, another uh, TV presenter but also former New South Wales Premier in uh, Christina Keneally as their uh, candidate. Now she was uh, the Premier at the end of the uh, well, pretty much sum it up as you know, the corrupt New South Wales uh, state Labor government years. But despite all of this baggage, uh, polling puts it at 50-50. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the result of this by-election could determine the, the fate of uh, both the Turnbull government and Turnbull himself. The, you, we had an argument... Uh, last night, Tim, about the importance of the state election. Uh, Stephen Cable and I uh, tended to agree with one another that it didn't really have much implication. Although I think that anyone who is relatively in tune with the Australian political landscape can realise the importance of Benelong. Uh, Benelong was the seat of John Howard. Uh, Benelong, you know, uh, is, I guess, maybe the crown uh, in the jewel of, of the Liberal Party in Sydney. Uh, to a great extent, but John Alexander um, is, under, is uh, under some substantial strain uh, here. Uh, Christina Keneally is a, a clean, polished and energetic figure with a great TV experience. High heels, a red dress, she's pretty, she's easy to listen to and she pretends to care about people. So, you know, it is rather appealing to, I guess, many voters. Uh, although one has to remember her connection. The reason why she was Premier is essentially she was appointed by Eddie O'Bead and uh, his cronies. Uh, she was they Eddie basically Obedience. Yes. Ha-ha. That's good. But, yeah, she was basically a pawn, uh, you know, in the corruption. She was... Uh, I, I don't really know if she... It, it, she, one way or another, she is to blame, either through being ignorant of the corruption that happened uh, or, or being complicit. Uh, so I, I think that that's one issue there. Another spanner in the works of the Benelong by-election is John Alexander's um, domestic violence joke, but that was from 20 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, that was probably in the Labor archives for a rainy day. Uh, and that's been pulled out, and that showed him making a joke. I doubt that would make too much of a difference. Um, you said nine-point healthy margin. I think it would be close, but this certainly, at the end of the day, is a referendum on Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, but if Benelong's won, uh, the the so-called anonymous sources that are in the Bolt report, talking to Andrew Bolt, sorry, I will be silenced. And it's not a good sign when, like, obviously the the domestic violence joke uh, came out when a whole string of things start to go wrong. It's not a good omen because there was also that uh, uh, f uh, campaign uh, photo that John Alexander's uh, campaign uh, released of him with his staff in his uh, campaign office uh, phoning up uh, constituents. Uh, though everyone was quick to point out that the phones were not plugged in. Yes. <laughs> well, that, that really shows uh, the Liberal Party in a sense. Uh, they're holding the telephone, pretending to talk to the people. Uh, it's all phony, uh, but the phones aren't plugged in at the other end. I think it's just a great representation of, of where the Australian Liberal Party is at the moment. 
uh, you know, a party that was once great under Menzies and Howard has seemed to lose its way a little bit over the last couple of years. I hope it turns good again. But at the moment, it is a little bit of a disaster under Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, you, but, oh, for, sorry, one more thing. Christina Keneally should not talk about phones or uh, broadband or anything related because we cannot forget the disaster of Kevin Rudd and the NBN uh, 10 years ago that has left us with slower internet speeds in Kenya. And uh, Bill Shorten, he's, uh, I think uh, he's been there perhaps three times already in uh, Bandalog. So uh, Christina Keneally, is, you know, she is uh, eager to appear b- uh, beside uh, Bill Shorten. And everyone was asking, you know, where's Malcolm Turnbull in uh, Bandalog? Well, he did show up uh, today, this Sunday, and it actually went surprisingly well for him. He was mobbed with a request for uh, selfies. So, you know, out on the street, he's, you know, he's not the, uh, you know, uh, pariah, town pariah yet. I remember in Julia Gillard's dying days as Prime Minister, she, if she was ever out in public, you know, she would get, you know, heckled. Uh, when she went to school, she got sandwiches thrown at her. So uh, I, I don't think that there's, you know, this huge, um, you know, hatred for, for Malcolm Turnbull. That I think maybe the voters feel uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit sorry for him, but <laughs> that, that's still not good. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, two things that I really think signify the, the fall of the coalition at the moment, one being Malcolm Turnbull could not name an ACDC song, and two, John Alexander didn't have the phones plugged in. Now, you might think that these are very, very small things, but they signify, one, that they are disconnected with the Australian people, literally, and two... You know, that, that they're not on the same wavelength as the Australian people, uh, quite literally, again. I doubt that Malcolm Turnbull would listen to Triple M or uh, watch Fox footy or would have pies with the boys. Uh, that he seems to be a bit out of touch, but he seems to be likeable. He is not getting heckled, uh, which is a good sign, but I think that this, I think that Malcolm uh, is walking on a tightrope at the moment, and when he falls off that tightrope, uh, I guarantee you there won't be cushions or people there to catch him. There will be crocodiles uh, swimming around in circles, sharks swimming around in circles, willing and wanting uh, to eat him up um, and tear him to shreds. So it's just one mistake or one gush of populism uh, to knock Malcolm Turnbull off that tentative tightrope that he walks uh, that will be the fall of his government. And all I can say to anyone is, is God help us all if uh, Bill Shorten uh, walks into Kirribilli House in the next uh, 12 to 18 months whenever the next election happens. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.